वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम अम्य कुमार दास एसोसिएटेड विथ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ सोशियोलॉजी तेजपुर यूनिवर्सिटी टुडे इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस एंटेंगल मॉडर्निटीज एंड सिक्वेंशियल थ्योरीज एज डेवलप्ड बाय सुदीप्त कविराज अंडर द पेपर कंटेम्प्रर सोशल थ्योरी एज वी ऑल नो that modernity is like a colorful rainbow which has taken a particular shape and size in a particular context various scholars and critics in the non western world including the western world they have criticized the whole idea of modernity the concept of modern and the process of modernization so whatever thing we see today attained to be painted in the color of modernity but because of our curiosity both in the academic and in the non academic sphere gives us various kind of impetus to ask questions that from where and in what condition this concept of modernity and from where it started we traveled where and how it became part of this universal discourse so to start this discussion we need to understand the various aspects of modernity and its position as developed by sudipta kaviraj so before that we need to know who is sudipta kaviraj sudipta kaviraj is arguably india's foremost scholar in the field of intellectual history his contributions to understanding indian politics and the state have been immense he has worked on the two areas of intellectual history these being indian socio political thought in the past two centuries and the politics of modern literary and cultural production his other scholarly interest include tracing the genealogy of the state in india and social theory he finished his undergraduate education and the presidency college now presidency university kolkata he has a phd from jawaharlal nehru university new delhi He currently works as a professor in the Department of Middle Eastern, South Asian and African Studies at Columbia University in New York. Before joining Columbia University, he has taught politics and political science at SOAS, London and JNU. He has also been an Agatha Harrison fellow at St Anthony's College, Oxford. Kaviraj's book include The Imaginary Institutions of India the trajectory of the indian state politics and ideas the enchantment of democracy and in india politics and ideas civil society history and possibilities co-edited with sunil khilnani politics in india and the unhappy consciousness bankim chandra chatopadhyay and the formation of nationalist discourse in india kobiraj tries to link colonialism with modernity he argues against the universal and singular approach of modernity he says that modernity cannot be uh, monolithic in a sense that it is cannot be singular it is having multiple uh, implication and it have it is having diversity it whenever it goes to a particular context particular society so it creates itself according to the context and situation in that sense he argues for multiple modernities he delineates three points to illustrate his argument first he argues that although modernity often involves significant ruptures with extant social practices often the processes and practices engendered by modernity are not completely unprecedented he argues analogically with the example of learning a second language when a bangla speaking person learns english as a second language often the english of such person carries 
a lilt and cadence of Bangla. Similarly, Kabiraj argues modernity carries traces of the pre-modern. And since the pre-modern is of a varied vintage and inherently plural, the modern is also produced in a context specific manner. Secondly, Kabiraj argues that modernity is a plural process based on actual historical evidence of various societies experience with modernity. He says, it is possible to argue that unlike what most western theorists of modernity posit, no single causal process can produce all the artifacts and institutions of modernity. Further, he argues the actual ways in which social processes occur and connect with each other have a strong bearing on the final outcomes. Since these processes are inherently plural, the outcomes cannot be singular. In this context, he gives the example of secularism in India. By the time democracy with adult suffrage arrived in Western societies, they were sufficiently secularized. Hence, in the West, there was no major conflict between democracy and secularism. But in the Indian context, democracy with adult suffrage arrived in a country where group loyalties, including religious loyalties, were important and society was not sufficiently secularized. Hence, in the Indian context, there are fault lines between constitutional demands of a secular polity and the imperatives of a non-secularized society. Third, Kaviraj puts forth modernity is characterized by reflexivity in two ways. In the first sense, modern institutions and practices are directed as much towards the other, as they are towards the self, towards their own societies. In the second sense, reflexivity refers to a recursive process through which the technologies of modernity get refined and perfected over a period of time. Because of this fact, it is not likely that colonial and post-colonial societies will have to repeat the experiences of Western societies in order to become modern. Sudipta Kabiraj also talks about various communities in the sense that fuzzy and enumerated communities in the context of India. In the pre-modern times, in the pre-modern India, he says there are asymmetrical hierarchies existed in the Indian context. Communities were fuzzy. They didn't have clear demarcation on the basis of special characteristics. Because of this western form of governance, colonizers brought census, this decadal census into the practice where these communities had to clearly be enumerated on the basis of their identity. These identities were based on various physical and social and cultural characteristics, characteristics they had in them. So, to understand this process and how colonization process because of that modern governance system and census process changed this community's practices, he uh, projects it in the form of fuzzy and he, he terms it as fuzzy and enumerated communities. Kaviraj also points towards the emergence of the state sovereignty in the colonial India. He says that because of their own form of rules and regulations, they brought a kind of uniformity in the governance system. Either community were separated on the basis of distinct form and the uniform governance system was not present in the pre-modern or pre-colonial societies. But because of this democratic form and the principle which are part of the western form of governance, they tried to bring a kind of uniformity through a kind of census and uh, giving various communities uh, a kind of particular identity and to enumerate them. This census and enumerations gave according to Sudipta Kaviraj and he claims that to be that enumerated community. So, because of this colonization process, he terms it, it in a very interesting way that Kaviraj says that colonial civil society because of this 
colonization it came to existence. So, Sudipta Kaviraj delineate various processes mostly in the Indian context. He tries to show us how in the Indian context the influence of colonialism has created a different kind of modernity. Going against the argument that modernity is having a monolithic structure which creates a universal pattern everywhere wherever it goes, he says it is not like that in many other societies. Specially giving examples from Indian context, he argues that it is multiple in its nature, means that he says that it has multiple dimensions. While talking in a journalistic way by explaining, he says that this politics in India emerged because of that anti-colonial struggle and the growth of nationalism happened because this politics or this engagement of the native people or the Indian people against these colonizers. If we look at various aspects of it, it gave a kind of first in its uh, way or the, for the first time it established its uh, sovereignty in the Indian history because of this colonization, the conflict between or the freedom struggle by the Indians against the Britishers, it gave a meaning to the struggle to carry it forward. If we try to put that in the language of Kaviraj, he says from the time of the British dominance in India was cognized by people in the initial response was one of bafflement. For most thinking people in India, it was inconceivable that a sophisticated civilization such as India could be subjugated by what they saw as the Malaysia British. According to Sudipta Kaviraj, when Indians started interrogating colonial subjection and moved from a position of anti-colonialism to that of nationalism, from asking questions surrounding reasons for India's civilizational defeat to the possibilities of freedom from colonial rule, certain key processes got initiated. One set of dialogue regarding Britain's superiority over India and the reasons for the latter's defeat in the hands of the former was seen as a result of social organization. The British were seen to constitute a collectivity, a nation, and were seen to have their command, a state that acted at the behest of this nation. The British colonial state in India could not completely implement its liberal utilitarian agenda in the colony for very obvious reasons. Instituting a system of liberal political rights would have been suicidal to the colonial state in India its ambitions in the region. Instead, what it did, as already mentioned, is to institute a system of liberal rights in the social and economic spheres. This meant that at the level of experience by the people of this meant that at the level of experience by the people, the totality of social cognition got divided into three spheres. These are mainly the social, the economic and the political. So, these spheres divided into three aspects. These were the social, the political and the economic. Because the sphere of the political was left without a governing framework of rights by the colonial state over a period of time, it started leading to a process of intense contestation. Politics thus became the name for the claim making on the state by communities whose very nature started changing through the process of contestation involved in claim making. The process of claim making led to a peculiarly new form of we feeling where people could collectively work together for enhancement of collective interest.
Initially, these collectivities were jati based, but over a period of time, a sense of nationhood started developing. For some time, it was not clear whether it is language or religion or something else that can be the basis of nationality. But over a period of time, only the Indian nation was seen as capable of overthrowing the foreign yoke. But the ways in which Indian nationalism was fashioned, it was done with the understanding that a blind imitation of the Western experience will not work. In this context, Kabiraj contrast two ideal type position. On one hand, leaders such as Gandhi and Tagore argued that India as a civilization cannot follow Europe blindly. The Western experience of modernity involved a lot that was undesirable. For example, widespread violence and India as a civilization needs to chart out its own path of inhabiting the present moment. Nehru on the other hand, saw modernity as desirable, but he also saw it is an essentially reflexive process that will necessarily involve India making different political choices for constituting the nation. Since the linguistic reality of India was plurality and diversity, imposing one language as the basis of Indian nationalism would have been counterproductive. According to this reading, similarly, in a society which is not sufficiently secularized, not taking into account the religious concerns of a substantial minority can only make the foundation of a nationalism weak. A parallel set of processes involve the production of the nation, the production of language-based identity reasons, and the birth and growth of politics as a domain of sociality during the anti-colonial national movement. Indian nationalism grew up as essentially diaglossic. Since European forms of social organization such as the state were seen as key to the success of the colonial enterprise, the nationalist movement, despite contrarian noises by some key players such as Gandhi and Tagore, took as its objective the removal of foreign control over the state rather than a radical restructuring of state-society relations and politics per se. To conclude and summarize this discussion, we can say that Sudipta Kabiraj, unlike other critics of modernity, focuses on multiple aspects of modernity. He says from the beginning that modernity is not having a kind of uniform or singular avatar. It is having multiple and diverse uh, avatar where it goes, it takes the context and peculiarities of the local or that uh, region, specific region. From the beginning, we saw that how through different arguments, he creates and his argument through various examples saying that when there, there uh, existed a different kind of sense of modernity, but when it came, the Britishers came to India because of their uh, colonization and this process of modernization, these two, uh, these two were inherently related. So he is not dissociating the process of colonization from modernity, rather he is trying to look at these two as one, uh, both side of the single coin. Again, if we look at the Western context, the society, culture, language, reason, religion are almost the same. But in a country like India, we see that there are diversity, the multiplicity of the population in terms of language, reason, religion, and the caste. These were the biggest challenges for the colonizers. But prior for, to this technology of rule, prior to this use of technology of rule by the colonizers in Indian context, communities didn't have the clear distinction idea about their own community or for that matter, they didn't have any clear idea about the geographical boundary and the number. In this context, Sudipta Kabiraj brings 
in the notion of fuzzy communities and enumerated communities. Because of this governance system, they try to bring in a various kind of rules, technology of rule, whereby they bring in various kinds of methods, governance system to distinguish between various communities by creating various kind of identities so that these communities can be distinct on the basis of their characteristics. This fuzziness can be dissolved, fuzziness can be solved on the basis of census and enumeration. So, British government tried to establish a distinct sovereignty. He argues that the British colonizers, they introduced sovereignty to this nation, Indian nation, and uh, they showed it or they tried to establish is a uh, kind of uniform uh, nation. But to the contrary, there were uh, various kind of anti-colonial struggles were going on. India was not homogeneous or homogeneous entity unlike this European countries and uh, nations. So, here in the Indian context, he gives example of Gandhi and uh, Tagore who were critical of the Western civilization. They said that in Indian context, the in Western civilization will ruin our morality, will ruin, ruin our culture and own society. But in this context, Kaviraj says that modernization though it is having various other characteristics, the another important characteristics of modernization or being the modern is having reflexivity. It is self-critical in its nature. Wherever it goes, it takes the characteristics of the local. It modifies according to the local specificities and local condition. So, he gives us various kind of ideas where we can delineate the uh, approach and understanding of modernity in a newer form. The newer form means what I mean to say here in the context of Kavira's idea is that he stresses mainly in terms of that multiple modernities. Multiple modernities means in various other discussions we have seen, in various other modules we have seen that it has been represented as a uniform or universal. But in the context of India, Kaviraj argues that where it is practiced, it takes the shape of the particular place. In a very simple language or simple example, we can say that like when we use the term liquidity or liquid. Money is being used as that liquid form of wealth. As it can be stored in any other form. So, in a it takes the shape of a particular container. That is why it is called as liquid. Similarly, modernity in Indian context or any other context according to Sudipta Kaviraj, if you look at the whole idea of multiple modernities, that means we do not have any singular form of modernity. It is interpreted in various ways. It is practiced in various ways. In Indian context, we have multiple caste, ethnicity, region, language and religion, which in turn affect this governance in a uh, secular way, what we have seen in the Western context, that there is a strong relationship between democracy and secularism. But in Indian context, we need to change the description, the definition and this idea about secularism. In Indian context, secularism different from this western context because unlike that western countries, we do not have a homogeneous population. We have multiple uh, ethnicity, we have multiple reason, we have multiple religion, we have multiple languages. So, in this context, it is important to mention that to sum up and to uh, give uh, a kind of concluded remark on this module, we can say that Sudipta Kaviraj's idea on multiple modernities or entangled modernities, he argues that we cannot have a kind of universal 
modernity or modern or modernization process for that matter which has created this condition of modernity rather we have multiple and diverse ways of looking at this modernization process thereby he calls it multiple modernities for further information kindly log on to the epg patsala website and where you have more readings and references thank you